What's good, YouTube? This your man, Spill Dog. <clears throat> you know what, man? We all we all need to just let's keep this let's keep this this real for a second, man. Uh, if we being honest with ourselves, people that really know something about boxing, Frank had no business in the ring with Tank uh, last night. He didn't. Uh, um, that's why I said in a lot of my videos leading up to the fight, I hope he don't get hurt and. Hopefully, if he would start taking punches, they gonna stop the fight because Tank has got too much experience for a guy that started late and fighting the dudes that he had fought up to this point. He hadn't, he, he didn't do what it take to be prepared to fight somebody like Tank. And them facts, you know, you tell me what on his resume would have prepared him for a fight with uh, with uh, Javante Davis. You show me where on his resume he belonged in that ring last night. Nowhere on there. Uh, I'm going to tell you, you know, and let me tell you something. I'm a Frank Martin fan. And I pr and I hope and pray that he done made him some good money in this fight, that they bag this thing back up and get him in there with some, some low-level fighters, well, you know, C-level C fighters, uh, low B-level fighters, and let him work his way like he was doing before, go right back to what he was doing before he got here and just improve the competition. He don't fought the C-level fighters. Now it's time for him to get to the B-level fighters. And that's all I was saying when I made the video. Uh, you know, in most in life, you crawl, walk, then run. Frank went from crawling straight to running. He skipped the walk phase. He fought no B-level fighters. He's been fighting C-level fighters his entire career, and he's going to go from that to an A-plus fighter. <laughs> Shit, man. He really didn't have no... That's why I, that's why I said this was a tune-up for Tank. There's no way this dude going to beat him unless somehow he catch him with a lucky shot. That can happen to anybody. Anybody can get caught with a good punch and get knocked out. So, in, in that respect, everybody got a chance. But it wasn't no realistic chance for Frank in that last night. Only thing that was realistic... This is why I kept saying from the time they announced the fight, this is win-win for Frank. He gonna win because he's gonna make a lot of money, and he and he win because he gonna be able to get a lot of experience and learn a lot from this from this fight right here because it ain't no way he was gonna win it. He just wasn't ready, and and, and I mean he just wasn't ready. It wasn't a, it, it, he, he haven't been fighting long enough, and he haven't been fighting the fighters. And it just wasn't gonna happen. Uh, I think Earl was just giving him what he wanted, you know. Uh, and I think after this, I think Earl will understand as a promoter. Sometimes, sometimes you gotta, uh, sometimes you gotta uh, hold him up and pump the brakes because you need your fighter to keep winning. You know, you don't need him to start taking L's early in his career. You know, uh, you know that 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 hurt him down the road. So. I think they need to bag it all the way up. He don't need to be in there with no Keyshawn Davis next. He don't need to be in there with no Shakur, none of that right now. Take him a step behind all that and let him work his way. Give him two or three fights before he get back in, in some with a high B-level fighter. And he still don't need no A-level fighter yet, especially if they got power. And it's not that he can't take a punch. You know, you got you just gotta get you just gotta go through your steps, especially when you start late in the game. But I was, you know, he he, he did he did okay for two rounds or uh, two or three rounds. I mean, but if if I've watched the fight three times already, uh, and me being honest, after the second second, I give him a third two maybe, but after the third round is go there, I see he had the first three rounds. I don't know what Tank hit him with, but he started going backwards. And if it wasn't for them ropes, he'd have, jumped, he'd have fell out the ring. Because, I mean, he was hitting the ropes because he was trying to go further back. And my thing is this. You got to push him back. You ain't going to be able to beat Tank going backwards. And, and, and when well, you can't sit down and put nothing real on him, Tank coming. And Derrick James told him that after the first, after the second round, he said, "Look, be ready, cause he gonna he gonna come." Derrick James, I gotta say, and and you know I was you know I, you know Earl is my man, so that might be why I was a little bit hot with Derrick James. But let me just I gotta make this point clear. 
Derrick James gave Earl the right information in the corner against Crawford. Now, I don't know what happened in training camp. I'm assuming not what they were supposed to be doing, but he was giving them the right information, and he was giving Frank the right information, too. He wasn't doing what Derrick told him a lot because he kept half the fight. He was bagging up and going straight to tank left, going into his power. And Derrick James kept telling him, you need to go to the right. You're going the wrong way. And, yeah, maybe Tank was cutting off the ring, but you can't just keep going into this man power. And he did and he did that round after round. I mean, after the, after the second, third round, man, he was just in there to me trying to survive. That's all he was doing. I mean, Tank was, uh, was stalking and coming to get him, and he was just trying to hang on. And I, I was, you know, I felt like I knew he was going to get knocked out. I felt like if, since you're going to get knocked out anyway, possibly, you damn sure can't win the fight the way he was going backwards. I mean, go anybody who like just go watch the damn fight. Watch the fight and watch from the, the middle of the second round t until he got knocked out. That boy would not step forward to say I, he just would. He never. He just kept running. I mean, not running, but bagging up, bagging up, bagging up from corner to corner on the ropes. Derrick James told him stay off the ropes. Stop going to your left. He was telling him the right stuff in the corner. Now, I didn't hear him tell him to push him back, to, you know, to start making him, you know, bagging him up. But I'm assuming he probably told him that, too. And it, it, he was so worried about getting hit by them shots. He was he was clearly in survival mode for, uh, shit, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. In a sixth round, Tank got to the point where he just had his hands down, walking to him and just busting him up, treating him like it was his little brother or something like that. Go watch the fight. Go watch the fight, you know, uh, and it was clear this boy is out of his league. He could, even the big counter punches he was throwing, it looked good, but they wasn't landing. Go look at the when they showed the replays, they was getting close, but Tank was slipping up shots. He had eight plus fighter. Tank got defense and offense. Tank is a he's a complete package, and Frank is too, but he ain't on that level yet. Frank is a damn good fighter, but you can't rush this thing. I think he'll be about 30, 33 years old would be his prime as far as him learning what he needs to learn. He got a few more years to go before he can catch up to what these guys are, some of these guys already know. That's just the truth and the facts. It ain't, I mean, it's no diss, but I just hope Earl slow it down now, you know, so he don't get hurt and can't keep going because he you know he could have got hurt bad and i'm glad it happened like he did that's why i kept saying if every damn every video i made about this fight I, could, I at the end of it i would say i just hope he don't get hurt see because this boxing thing is for real and you really need to, it truly is levels to this to this to this thing right here and you put a green guy in there with a dude who really know what he's doing and he got a reason to hurt this guy you know, or try to really get him up out of there. You can, you can, man, you can get killed in there. That boxing ring serious, uh, and people need to fight people that's on the same level because to keep people from getting hurt real bad. Real talk. I mean, because did y'all see how helpless he was? Tank caught him with an uppercut. Them uppercuts I've been telling y'all about. He caught him with an uppercut on them ropes, and that's what that's what had him over there on the rope, drunk like that. And then bang, uh, Tank just. What if Tank was being dirty or just really didn't like Frank and, and gave him a couple of them when he was laying on the ropes helpless with both his hands down, his head just up in the air, and Tank blasting him with that last punch? He could have he could have ran some off if he wanted to and hurt that boy back. That's what I, that was my biggest fear of him getting hurt bad. So I, I think Earl going to see now I need to slow it down and bag this thing up because if not, you that boy going to get dogged out. You know, he's not ready to fight uh, Tank and Shakur and them guys like that yet. I'm glad he didn't take the fight with Shakur because he made more money for this fight, and it probably would have been a similar outcome. You know, it may have been a decision in that one because Shakur don't punch as hard as Tank, but he would, it, Frank ain't ready for them dudes. That's just the facts. You know, Keyshawn Davis is might know too much. It's possible. The boy been in the Olympics. You know, uh, you know, you, he has seen a lot of different styles. He, you know, when you, and like I say, man, uh, there's levels to this boxing game, and I'm proud of Frank. He did, he, he afforded himself good, 
you know, uh, he did show up. You know, he wasn't just there. You know, he really did. He won. I would give him three rounds. He won three straight rounds. And uh, he gained a lot of experience. And I think I think even in his heart, he got to know he need, there's some stuff he need to work on before he fight on that level again. Make sure you're ready. And he, I, I knew he wasn't ready yet. I, I, after that last fight he had last year, and Tank picked him. Y'all got to realize Tank picked him. You think he's going to pick somebody who he can't beat? <laughs> Shit. I mean, he, he knew he could beat this. That's why I say it was a tune-up. But it was, like I said, I'm glad, glad Frank got the money. And he didn't get hurt. So the rest of it don't even matter to me. And he can fight on, you know, uh, I like both fighters. I'm a big Frank Martin fan. I'm a way bigger Javante da Tank Davis fan. So, I mean, uh. It's on to the next one for both fighters. I think I think Frank should take about three or four months off, not too long, and then get on back in the ring. But stay away from them. For, stay away from these killers for a little while. Stay away from these big dogs, and stay in your lane for a minute and get yourself all the way ready. So the next time you step up like that, you prepare for it. But uh, that's it for me on this video. If you like the video, hit the like and subscribe. To the next time, it's your boy Spiel Dog. I'm out.